Hey everyone, it's a beautiful weekend in Florida and I've got something different today. So, I came across this at a uh, antique store for $25. It's a 1940s, I believe, R&M fan. And uh, I'm gonna try to bring it back to life. A couple things make me think it's 1940s. It's kind of got this hybrid from the Victorian era, but it's also got the Art Deco. So it's kind of got a hybrid cage. I can't read it yet, as you can see here. Uh, it's gonna require some work to be able to read what the model number is yet. It is um, locked really well. I mean, it does not. You can push the blades, uh, but it requires a good degree of force. So that could mean that it was run until the bearing went, and then it'll never really run again. Or it could mean that it's simply been abused or neglected for so long that it's all dried up. Obviously, the electricals are junk. But it seems otherwise complete. It's got the ar uh, oscillator arm, which also this kind of confuses me. It's an older oscillator arm. The motor is definitely um, 1930s, but this is later. So it's certainly a kind of hybrid. And not to say that it hasn't had parts swapped out, because it may have. It's been around a long time. Um, these blades underneath the coats of paint and all the bends that's going to be an interesting thing to balance right there. Um, they're aluminum. In fact, this blade has really been whacked. I don't know what, I don't know what happened there. That's going to be fun to balance if I do get it running. But one step at a time, if nothing else, I can make it look really pretty. The switch, uh, I mean, there's, not, there's nothing there. It just moves. So uh, maybe I can bring the switch back. Uh, if not, I can probably wire it to just be a one-speed plug-and-play. But anyway, interestingly, the uh, owner of the store, uh, it was $25, asked me what I was going to do with it. And I told her, I'm going to restore it, and I'm going to try to bring it back. And so she said, okay, $20 then. So let's see. Let's see how it comes out. Um, I know one thing about working on these, we're going to get dirty. It, it's going to be a, a, a dirty job, but uh, hey, let's get busy. Okay, uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take it apart, at least the easy stuff. So first thing I'm going to take off is the cage, um, 9 sixteenths maybe. Oh, we're missing a knot on this side, so. Yep, 9 sixteenths. Obviously, this will be non metric. Everything is, uh, Rusted and painted on. So nothing really wants to let go. Yep, nothing wants to let go. None of these want to come off. You may have seen in the background of some of my other videos, um, old fans in use. So I'm optimistic that I can get this guy going. Take 
the blades off next. As I thought, the blades aren't going to just slide right off. Here's something interesting. Um, there's actually a lot of string stuck in between in here. So let's see if I can get a screwdriver in there to kind of push it out. Yep, it's going. A lot of times though these were not built to be thrown away so a lot of times in spite of all of this you can bring it back and this fan looks like it was probably in a in a wet barn or outside for a long time all right so see these blades you can see something's really bashed these things it's debatable if i'll ever be able to get these um properly balanced uh, we got metal here this is aluminum I believe uh, so another thing is if I strip them down to aluminum and polish them up again they're not gonna look right you're gonna be able to see all the dings and bends and stuff in them so I may repaint them anyway though as much as I hate to do that but I think first thing let's get this paint off so I'm gonna use something I don't use very often which is paint remover. I'm going to need to get these blades back to get the motor spinning, but uh, let's, let's put these in some paint remover and see what happens. It is very bright out here and very hot. I only have a few hours today and this may take longer, even though certain steps don't take long. If you're going to do it right, it's a process. This is called two minute remover. Let's see. I, I usually apply it with a brush. Let's see how goofy, gooey it is. It's pretty goo gooey. That's good. Looks like it's working already. Two minutes. Let's get back to the fan itself and the motor. So, uh, in my experience of these things, uh, Robinson Myers was a pretty good mid tier fan. GEs were good, Westinghouses were excellent. Um, but Emerson's, I think, were tops. So one way we're gonna tell when the last thing this thing received any attention is the oscillator box. So what happens with this stuff is it's basically axle grease is what you can replace it with. Um, it will either be empty, completely dried out, or the wax will be turned or the grease will be turned to wax. Let's see, I haven't done one of these. Uh, what about this guy just unscrews maybe? Yeah, okay. This thing appears to be brass. You might be able to pretty that up. All right, let's look at what we got in here.
the grease isn't all that bad. It's not great. It's not that bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop all this out and I'm going to fill it with fresh axle grease. All right, let's, uh, let's take care of that. All right, so remember I told you it's a dirty job. We're not even at that part yet. This grease is definitely burned. This thing's been run very, very hot. Again, could be a bad sign. On the other hand, I have seen <coughs> grease that comes out of these that is um, candle wax, essentially. And yet I've been able to save them. My only fear is that the bearings burned out or that the wire to the motor is shot. I don't like taking these old motors apart. Uh, uh, a real expert wouldn't have much of an issue. But one thing I have noticed is that these bearings inside this motor have worn in a particular way that when you take this casing apart, it'll never quite run that smooth again unless you do a complete rebuild of it something which um, this is not a valuable fan uh, it's an industrial one uh, if it were brass cage and blades and all that stuff it'd probably be worth doing but it's not this thing was put probably in a factory or shop somewhere and run to death We're going to give it a second life. Wow, oh, that's locked up. I can't even turn this. Best I can this way. see what we can do with this on the uh, wire brush. Oh, speaking of old fans, there you go. Right there up in the background is a 1940s Hunter. That is one of the very first old fans I ever bought. Let's see. Brass. Tough to say. not look like this part is brass. A further indication that this fan was not a particularly fancy one. All right, let's get back to it. Whew. 
had commented on the wind yesterday uh, and how it usually heralds in a change in weather. And yeah, it did. It's hot out. It's really hot. All right, let me get my grease gun. To fill that thing up. You don't have to pack it tight. You just have to make sure that everything's greased. Okay. So, yeah, these are not like the grease fittings on your 59 Biscayne. You don't have to fill them, but you want a good amount in there so that everything moving, every moving part is coated. So. Tell you, cleaning this to prep for painting is going to be a trip. It is filthy. Absolutely everything is covered with grease. And old grease, old machine shop grease. Okay, let's see how our blades are coming along. Well, it looks rougher. It's kind of working. I'm gonna try something new. Okay, I'm gonna go kind of force it, so. Eye protection and gloves for this. And those of you who are concerned that I am adding a lot of fine scratch lines to the blades, yeah, I am. That's my least concern. These, these blades are pretty much junk. And I'll have to paint them anyway. So this is interesting. Under all the silver paint, I'm finding black paint. And that makes me suspicious that these blades were originally painted black. It is hot out here. Wow. Eighty five. Yeah, it's eighty five all right. get the final coat paint remover on it just to clean up whatever I miss, which probably a lot, but at least now the paint remover can get in. And if I really want to polish the blades, I can. The scratches I put on, they're not really going to be a big deal.
should take anything else off that we need. But this fits it for these gloves. Yeah, they're so they're absolutely soaked inside. It is really hot out today. All right, so I'm debating whether I want to put paint remover on this badge or not. There's a lot of paint on it, um, but underneath this badge, it's either aluminum with black uh, scripting or it's brass with black painted scripting. Um, I don't know if acetone will work for me, but I'm gonna try acetone first because it's not gonna do that. Maybe acetone will take off the silver and leave the black underneath. But, all right, so next up, let's wash this thing. Didn't get all of it, but we got enough. I think it's now a workable thing. So before it completely dries out, let's uh, There are still many layers of paint in some areas of this, but I think steel wool will take care of that. It is aluminum under there. That has a brass ring, metal, aluminum. These are metal. That's brass. Interesting. This really is kind of a fan that's got a lot from different periods going for it. I'm gonna leave this on top of there. Also, I'm gonna rinse this some more. I don't want the cats coming near this stuff. Okay. I did rinse the blades off. Most of the paint is off. You can see some of that original black is holding fast, which is fine. That's the way the blades were originally. I'll probably repaint them black. I gotta hide all these chips and bends anyway, if I can get it going. So you didn't miss anything. The phone uh, actually cut out because it's too hot out. It was 85 degrees. So next step, I'm gonna see what's inside this thing. As well just cut that off there's no need to even look at it um, but yeah so one two looks like there's only two screws left so we'll take this base plate off let's get to that Monty, gonna get dirty gonna get dirty Yep, you're gonna get dirty. Come on, come down. Come down from there. Come on, why don't you come in the house for a while? All right. This is always a trip. You never know what you're gonna find in here. I do know. We don't need this. not seem like it's factory original at all. So I don't think it's collectible, but I'll save it. Okay, someone wants it. Let's see if these screws come out. Hmm. Nope. No, they don't want to come out. Why am I not surprised? 
Let's see what we can do to, before we strip them out to get them. Because this plate will have to come off. At least now I'm glad there's only two. So let's hit them with some penetrating oil and uh, tap around them, try to get them to come loose. Yep, got one. That's actually quite a surprise. Oh, look at that. Lesson learned. A little penetrating oil, some tapping before you strip screws out. Always works out for you. All right, let's try, let's see this. See what's in here. You gotta watch this. When you take these off, you gotta watch the switch, the power switch. Because it gets stuck on that. Oh jeez, look at that. A little bit of rust. Is holding us. Something's holding us in. <laughs> that power cord? Might be. Let's cut it on this side. This power cord? Could be that as well. Either way, we gotta get in there and see what's going on. about a close-up sure you're dying for that hey everyone I am interrupting my own video for a special CYA disclaimer working on electrical appliances can be dangerous even deadly especially antique ones if you don't know what you're doing if you're not comfortable doing it um, please just use this video for entertainment purposes only Here's what we got. Here's our power cord, pretty easy. Just a two pronger. Here's our motor cord, a little more difficult. Look at that, yeek. We got one, one strand left attached to that. Look at that, here's your switch controller. Dead box. This thing was, but it wasn't in its happy place, that's for sure. So, let's see. This is easy. The power cord is not going to be an issue at all. This stuff worries me. What shape are we in here? It's just so dirty, it's hard to tell. Sometimes, what I will do, if these wires are okay, is you just coat everything with liquid electrical tape, kind of re-insulate it. That, I can't do that, that's just one. Well, that's okay. I can maybe coat that. These, they're pretty solid. That's pretty solid right there, this wire, solid. These aren't bad coming in here. 
that's not bad. So let's let's take what are the odds? Pretty good actually. Let's take these off. So here's our power cord goes to these. <laughs> Put a new grommet in here. Um, gotta clean this crap out. There's so much crap in here. What about this switch? Maybe. It's worn. It's just so worn out. I mean, it just moves. So here's your likely three, two, one speeds. Um, I should probably take this off. If I bend this up, uh, it might reestablish contact with those under there. I don't know if you can see that. Essentially, that's how it works. It's like an old Frankenstein lab switch. It's just like click. And then when you move it, you push it down just slightly, and then you're on the next speed. But see, it's not gonna make contact like that. There's no spring to it. So I gotta get under there and bend it if I can figure out how to do that. But overall, I've seen worse. I have seen worse. The head wire isn't that bad. It looks it. But what it is, is it's the insulation is really old coming off of it. So, let me get a, let me just get this thing cleaned up. Let me take all this crap out and look a little better. Probably feel a little better too. Okay, um, so what I did was I went under here, this pushed the back of this arm down, and now while I did that, I pushed the front of it up to kind of re-establish some spring to it. And look at that, it's now running right in. Now, whether or not this will work or not, that's a mystery. So, um, we gotta add power. So let's look at what I've got in power cord ass assortments. Now, some people are purists and they only want an antique fabric cord. This is an industrial fan, which I will be using, not just putting on display, if it works. And so, um, to me, here's a two-pronger, two-wire cord, cut off something, a VCR maybe. I could use this one. This is nice, this green. I think the green kind of adds a little an antiqueness to it. I've got another black one here that's already set up, just cut that end off. But I'll save that because I don't know if I have a use for that someday. I may get something that has the two pronger. Um, I guess I won't use that because it's a good extension cord. So this is my winner. So let's get some crimps and let's uh, make a cord. And I gotta get a grommet. Cool. Wire stripper. And these guys. Let's, let's go make. I think I'll have to get the grommet first. But, let me get the grommet. I'll be right back. All right, it is getting hot. The phone is getting hot again. So uh, let's see how quickly we can do this. It is hot today. So much for early March in Florida. Okay, so we're coming through here. I've got my ancient grommet selection. Okay, so we're gonna, this looks to be the right size. We're gonna put the grommet on first and just slide it out of the way. All right, and then. Tuck through here. Be a little 
too short. Interesting. Um, let's look at this. It's kind of just interesting. Though this has got the metal fastener on it, this is just coiled wire. I wonder if this one's like that. Anyway, I'm going to do one at a time. You don't want to mess up where these wires go. Again, this is blue, match blue, these, and perfect, I'm good to go, okay. All right, so first things first. This guy on top. This is ceramic, um, so you don't want to make any of these too tight because you don't want to crack any of this stuff. Just, it's just coiled wire, so interesting. So I'm going to take an opportunity now to put some of that liquid electrical tape on some of these fraying wires. So here's what I'm using. I don't know who invented this stuff, but it was a great discovery. I just happened to ponder sometime if there was any type of literal liquid electrical tape, and lo and behold, I found it. My only thing is I kind of wish the brush were a little thinner. It's got this big, like, gasket sealing type of brush on it. I'm just putting this down. It'll add a little strength to these. Not that they're going anywhere. 
And anywhere where this wire is a little frayed, I'm going to recode it on top of that too. Maybe in another 80 years when someone else takes this apart, they'll think, what is this stuff? Alright, I think we're good. Coat this a little bit. It's very good for just putting a fine coat on fraying wires. It'll stop this fabric from fraying off. Um, so this, it dries like this. It dries almost like silicone. This rubbery. And a little goes a long way. I've had this bottle for years now. It's still good. Get some fraying on the inside here. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but just the fabric. Frank, I don't want to replace the head wire. I don't. It's a good sign that it'll never run right for me again because that's a level that requires rebuilding the motor and I'm not at that level yet. Nor will I ever be. It's just not a thing for me. Okay. So let's... Oh, geez. I got another step. Felt. So I got to put a felt pad on this. Let's see what I've got. I don't know what colors I have. found some felt um, these the felt is held in I don't know if it's hard to see because it's so rusty in here but there's a metal ring that snaps around the felt and holds it in place so let's see I got a collection of flat screwdrivers and things let's see how well I do getting this ring out I don't know but then you never do this thing is so rusty inside, I just have to think it was left outside for a while. I'm going to find where the break in the ring is. It's here somewhere. I think it's here somewhere, but I don't know. There it is. There we go. All right, popped up. So let's clean this thing up. Okay. Um, let's wipe this thing down again. Get all this crap out. Um, and let's put it together first. See if we can get it spinning on its own before we actually 
completely assemble it and then really paint it. I'm used to kind of going out of order and then I'll mask up around the power board. This guy is so rusty inside. Here's why you absolutely are going to need the blades, because this guy does not want to move. So it's got an oiler here. Uh, is this an oiler? It should have two. I would think it has two. That oh yeah, deep down in there looks to be the other oiler. That's my guess. Okay, camera overheated again, so we missed some steps. Um, this is the ring that holds the Velcro in, in this base, in case it shut off when I was doing that. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna I put it back together to, to a point. I haven't screwed it together or anything. I'm gonna kinda clean all this stuff up and get it turning. So I was just pointing out, this is newer. So this shows this fan is not like 1930s or 20s. This would have a little brass or, or uh, aluminum or metal oiler cup that's screwed in. It doesn't have one in back either. So we got an oiler here, and I was just digging out here. Digging out all the crap. So the um, question is, what do we put in it? What type of oil did they put in these things? Well, they put in motor oil, and not thin motor oil. They put 30 weight in there. So we're going to put the blades back on. And you see the slot there. The blade goes on, so the screw, I'll try to do this with one hand, but I doubt it, because this is almost. Um, so the screw goes in that slot. So we're gonna put, start putting oil in, we're gonna manually turn it. And once we get enough oil in there, we're gonna add some electricity to it. And it's a beautiful thing if you feel this thing start to pull under its own weight. So let me get some motor oil and let's see what we can get this thing doing. All right, here's my motor oil, 30 weight. I'm gonna pour some in there. It might take a bit to get the motor to take it. I'll put some on the shaft too. Now we're gonna manually start turning it. And just kinda hope oil starts getting in where it needs to go. Okay, what? It's likely to cut myself. The scary part is, if it doesn't get easier, pretty much means the bearings are fried, and it's never going to get easier. It's getting a little easier, a little bit, not much. So let's try this. Let's tilt it back. Let's 
some oil runs inside there. Oh yeah, it's getting easier. See that? It's starting. It's starting to come loose. Just keep going. We don't know how long this thing sat, but a long time. I'll say that. Okay. Well, look at that. Look at that. It's not perfect, but it's getting there. I think it's getting to the point where now we can plug this puppy in and see if the motor will do anything. This means a transformer, everything. Now, we gotta be careful. We got a cord on a breaker and it's on a power strip with another breaker on it because we don't know what this thing's gonna do. One, two, looks like we're about right there. I wanna make sure the base is, is placed correctly. sure we're off is off that's off okay so off is off we're kind of moving this is a big moment I don't want the phone to shut off on me so let's see what we're gonna do see if the switch works see if the motor works okay. Here. We got juice Oh, look at that. Here we go. Now you can't see it on the footage because of the frame rate, but it's actually spinning pretty quickly. And it's gonna pick up as the oil gets further in there. The blades are obviously very warm, which is why it's shaking so much. three speeds and the oscillator is trying to work look at that she oscillates you get a different angle maybe you can see how fast it's turning realistically the frame rate's kind of screwy it's turning pretty quick and it's getting faster it's so funny on the video. It looks like it's spinning so slowly. It's not. It's actually cranking. You can hear from the wind. Unreal. She's running. So I don't hear any bearing noise. Um, I see the shaft moving just a little bit, but not much. It's just shaking so much because the blades are so out of balance. It's putting out a good amount of air. It's probably, the camera's probably picking it up as wind noise. I'm gonna try some, I'm gonna take a slow-mo pick and see if it changes the frame rate because it's funny how it looks like it's barely spinning, but it is cranking. Let's try something. I me move away first. See if that makes a difference. I guess it's just at the wrong frame rate. It, it just looks like it's barely turning, which is so funny. All right, so she's worth saving. So 
So we're going to take it the next step, probably tomorrow, where I clean it all up, get the oil off, sand this down. I'm going to clean these badges up and uh, try to balance the blades and uh, paint it. We have a lot of steps left, but success. It's been a long time since this thing's run. All right, that's part one. We got that fan running. Um, I was I was dubious, but everything's working fine. I've got to uh, patch the head wire. I've got to paint it. I've got to put the felt on. I've got to straighten the blades. I've got to clean up the cage to get that ready for painting, fix the badges, a lot of work. So uh, it's gonna be a fun day tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. I gotta take a break for now. Phone's overheating again, and it is almost 90 degrees. Uh, in early March in Florida today. So, all right, a good day.